Are cheap alternative auxiliary fog lights any good? Should you buy these or should you fork out for the manufacturer's ones or the expensive aftermarket ones? Let's find out. As you're all probably quite aware, this is the front of my bike. Now, these are my, what look like my R1200 GS fog lights. They are in fact not, they are a cheap, I think Chinese knockoff. They literally look exactly the same. Uh, they are LED, as you can see the four LEDs in there. And I've had these fitted to my bike for knocking on, to, knocking on two years now. And to be fair, I've gone, I have had a second set because the wiring loom was, I had a bit of a, an issue with a wiring loom, but if I just, you might want to cover your eyes. They are incredibly bright. This matches my LED headlight, which I have upgraded from standard halogen. Now, what you'll find with a lot of these aftermarket ones is the light themselves are waterproof. They'll be IP67 rated or, or higher, but it's the wiring loom that's not. So the issue I had was there is a relay that comes with these that you have to put within the wiring loom. Now, I didn't hide that well enough. That was actually under here originally. What, actually, what happened with that is it got wet. All there was was there's three pins on it and they were getting shorted out by the water so these were flickering and it ended up it ended up uh, killing my battery but it's now up here so it's well out of the way i've wrapped it in a rubber glove as well just to make sure it does stay as dry as physically possible now that's all well and good now this bike over here this is my girlfriend's bike this is the mc750x now i know these get a lot of stick for being underpowered commuters but this is a cracking bike. I will be doing a review on this at some point. The thing that's relevant to this video is the headlight, although LED, on this model, which is the 2017 model, it's not incredible. It's quite bright, but it just doesn't light up the road, and it's not very bright to be seen on the road. Now, knowing that the light on that is not great, the first thing I suggested was to get some matching aftermarket auxiliary lights. Don't quote me on this, but there's a guy at work who has an NC 750. He looked at getting some of the Honda ones fitted and they were 250 pounds plus fitting. Now, if you look at Yamaha, you look at BMW, you look at any of the main manufacturers, you're paying at least 300 pounds. If you've got a BMW GS, you want to look higher than that as well. They are extortionate amounts of money for essentially what is an LED. And an LED is a cheap thing. It's just the housing and the wiring that then puts up the price, but they're not 400 pounds worth. When I was looking myself, I started looking on eBay and Amazon and all these other ones. Obviously I stumbled across the Denali ones. I think companies like Lone Rider do them as well. And although great, they're only sort of, maybe at best a hundred pounds cheaper than the manufacturer's one, sometimes more expensive. I can't justify spending two, three, 400 pounds on a set of aftermarket auxiliary fog lights if these ones work and are bright enough. So going back to mine, I think the branding is something like Litu, L-I-T-T-O-U. Now it was a Chinese manufactured item sold on Amazon and these were 90 pounds. I know one of the issues with Amazon is that although the part looks the same, it can differ by manufacturer, which means some people get a fantastic experience, some people get a really bad experience. They still do these, but at the point where we bought Emma's ones, these have gone up in price. So that's when these come in. These are some, I think, unbranded LED motorcycle fog lights. They do have a Cree chip in them, apparently, and they were £40, which is nothing. It says quite clearly on the box that they're made in China, and even the factory on, on Amazon said it was somewhere in China. But, I mean, if these are great, then fine. So here we go. We've got two of these in the pack. Now, they look, they're, they're a solid, it feels like a cast steel or cast aluminium body. They've obviously got these mounts and they've got the wire coming off. There's two of these. So we've got one there, another one here. They came vacuum packed in a, a plastic wrap, which is quite nice. So it comes with all that, come with, with some Allen keys. 
some incredibly naff instructions which basically just say connect the wires. It does come with this switch. Reading a few of the reviews, people were saying this switch is not waterproof. And you can see why it's, well, it's essentially an open backed plate thing. But also it looks a bit tacky. So what I've done, which is the same thing I did on mine, I bought a dedicated aftermarket motorcycle switch. This is IP67 rated as well. I think it might actually be IP68 rated. Uh, but it's a solid bit of kit. And I've had this on, this is the same one I've got on my bike and I've had on my bike for a while now and it's fine. And this was only six pounds. So there we go. We're gonna throw that switch away, mount these and this. The one thing I have noticed which isn't great is the fact that although it's got all the wiring and the wiring here, there's no connectors and there's no battery terminal connectors. So I'm gonna have to, well, you've got a couple of options with this. You can use crimp connectors. Uh, I bought this soldering iron kit, so I'm going to actually solder the wires together myself, um, which will hopefully give them a stable connection. And then the battery terminal connectors, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do yet. I'm going to look into the conductivity of some of these uh, washers and see if they work. And then I'm going to solder the wires onto that, I think, uh, to give you a bit more of a solid connection. So now we've looked at the lights, the next thing to do is find out where you're going to mount them. Now on my bike, I bought some adapters, which I think were from like RNG or somewhere like that. But they're really small and they're about 10 pounds and they literally just give you a solid mounting point for underneath the front of the bike, which is really great. On this bike, the NC750, it's filthy. Definitely gonna grill her about that later. Um, but as you can see, underneath here, if we had anything mounted under here, as you turn the wheel, it's gonna hit. So they're not ideal. We do have these, which will probably be the option. These are just some aftermarket F SW Motec crash bars. So I think we're gonna mount them to there. It seems like the logical option. Some people mount them down here, just to the side of that, but that's a pain in the backside if you wanna take the tires off at any point. And there's not really anywhere else you can mount. So just taking the light itself, I think we're gonna mount them like that, which will give you they're not, they won't stand out too much, but that will give you plenty of light when you turn them on. What I've done now, I've got the switch, got the two lights, I've got my soldering iron heating up. Now this soldering iron kit was actually really cheap. It was, uh, it was just a cheap Amazon job. It's got some thick wire, it's got some soldering wick, it's got a few different tips. It's got some spare wire, wire, cut, uh, wire stripper, some tin snips and some like, thinner wire comes with everything you need it was really really cheap on amazon i'll put a link in the description below if you're interested uh, i haven't tried it yet so don't have a go at me if it's crap on our in-depth instructions you can see it says power supply you've got the red wire or well orange in this case going up to the switch then the green coming off of the switch and connecting to the red of the light then i assume you would have to just link them up in series so you go from one light to the next light, then back to, then back to the battery. So I've stripped the stripped the ends of the wires, and I'm going to solder them together. The other thing I am going to do before I solder them is put some shrink wrap on this, and then I can heat up and then hopefully seal it up afterwards. As I said in the last clip, I think I've made my decision. They are going to go on the crash bars there because I think if nothing else, uh, if they're under here, which if I find a way of mounting under here without hitting these, that it's it's not only blocking light, but it's making the light, it's making all the light coming from the bike very central. Whereas if I put these out of the side, it gives three points of light, which means that she's gonna be noticed even more on the road, which would be nice. They are cheap, so they're probably blind people as well, but let's go from there. Right, no judgment from you lot. But essentially I have soldered these two wires together. You essentially strip the wire, twist it together, solder, and you literally just melt the solder on the soldering iron, and then you'll see it flow off when it's sort of got to the right temperature. So the red's going to the battery, the black and the red of the first light connected, the black and the red of the second light connected, and the black from this is gonna to go to the battery as well. So now the only thing to do is test it. I have no idea whether this is gonna work. If I do 
suddenly jolt and uh, jump back, it's probably because I've got an electric shock. Now the reason I'm testing this on my bike is because the uh, NC750 is uh, incredibly painful to get to anything, so my bike's uh, a little bit easier to get to, so we're gonna try this. I mean, if that is how bright they go, that is really naff. <coughs> Welcome back, YouTube. So what had basically happened with that is, because I'd wired them in parallel, is it parallel or series? So the battery went to the switch, the switch went to the first light, the first light went to the second light, the second light went back to the battery. That was obviously not getting enough current through the lights. So what I've done is I've redone it, so it's now, both the um, so both the lights are connected together, and then I've got um, the battery going to the switch. The switch goes to both of the lights, and then both the negative of both of the lights goes to the negative of the battery. So now we get we do this without trying to blind you. So now we get a very bright high beam, a slightly lesser low beam, and a strobe. So they are, I mean, they look, they looked slightly off then, but they are, <laughs> sorry. They are both equally as bright, which is really good. I was slightly worried there because they were, I thought they were just gonna be completely and utterly pants. But yeah, that's good news. So that means now I know they work, I can tidy up, oh, this is just very rough solder at the moment. So I can tidy all of that up and start fitting it to the NC750. The only thing I've got left to do is to get the bike outside, level the lights, they are more like a floodlight rather than a, a driving light, which is not as good. Mine, are, mine have got a beam pattern, which is quite nice, whereas these are just sort of like a, a, a full uh, floodlight. Just gonna try and get them so they're level to the best of my ability and then tighten up all the screws and then we're done. As you might be able to tell, it's got quite late. So this is the final product. Again, these will be these will be leveled out and put at a slightly better angle. But they don't look too bad. They look look okay, to be fair. We've got the same on the other side. I've got some zip ties holding up the um, wires which I need to cut. So the switch is here. Uh, the only irritating thing is that the screws that hold, that hold the bottom on, I mean, I've dropped one of them somewhere in the garage. <laughs> um, but they're not quite long enough to clamp around that, so I need to find another solution for that but they are working and you got the high beam low beam and epileptic fit beam so let's go outside and level them I do apologize it is very dark but they look quite good they look quite subtle which is nice even the low beam they're really bright and they look riding along with those would be completely fine. You can see there, those are the original lights. So they're pretty dim, even the high beams quite naff. So yeah, it's just so much brighter. I do know that this beam is slightly lower than this one, so I'm gonna raise this one up and I'm gonna see if I can splay them out a bit to widen the beam pattern. But it looks so much better. She's definitely going to get seen. <laughs> Again, even with the low beam on, it just looks so much better. Pain the backside to fit. Tick. Not enough wiring. Tick. Crap wiring diagram. Tick. Do they work? Yes. Are they bright? Yes. <laughs> you guys are probably squinting at your screens right now. Will they be waterproof, TBC? I will keep you... Mine seem to have been, so let's hope these are as well. So that's been it. Thanks for joining me on this um, slightly painful adventure. Um, I think they add so much more to the bike, just even just road presence, if nothing else. Um, hopefully they're going to be level enough that she doesn't start blinding people. And um, if... If she does, then we can just aim them down a bit, which would be nice. 
I don't want them too low because then they don't light up the road enough. And I just raised them up a little bit until people start flashing me and then I dipped them. I don't have any settings on mine for the high beam and low beam, so that's really useful that she's got that. The flashing one's completely pointless, but... So yeah, thanks for joining me, and I'll see you in the next one.